Out of a personal tragedy, my guest today has started a charity that encourages us all to pinch the toiletries from our hotel room. You know what it's called? Pinch a poo. Yeah, pinch a poo. <laughs> well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show Where successful small business owners share their souls To take your marketing straight to the lead Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie And welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show I'm your host, Timbo Reed. You, so much more importantly, are a motivated business owner ready to crank out some great marketing. Marketing that is going to have you so set apart from your competition, it won't even be a race anymore. Marketing that will help you build that business of yours into the empire that it deserves to be. That's exactly what we do around here. If you're new to the show, welcome. If you are old to the show, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, uh, we're made possible by a couple of wonderful sponsors. One is Key Person of Influence, a fantastic entrepreneurial program that you really should at least read their book, if nothing else. And their book's free to you, the listener of this show. It's an Amazon bestseller too. You can grab a free hard copy over at keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. Once you've read that, grab a free book, one of 180,000 titles over at Audible. They have a lot of audio books and there will be one to please you, I'm sure. You can grab your free copy as a listener of this show over at audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM. Hey, big show today. I have a chat with Kate Austin. Now, Kate is the founder of a not-for-profit called, as I said at the top of the show, I wasn't joking and I do love a joke, Pinch a Poo. And she asks her poosters, they're my words, that's actually my word, not hers, she's got another word for the people that do this, uh, to take the toiletries from uh, the hotel bathrooms that you stay in and send them to her. She then distributes them to the needy through a variety of charities. And along the way, I actually end up giving her a whole lot of marketing tips. So it becomes a bit of a personal consult, if you know what I mean. But Kate's got a great personal story, a sad one, but I love what she's done with it. I think you're going to enjoy this big time. Uh, I have got seven great tips from a listener Another listener, like last episode, that is taking big action. And a beautiful email I received from this person I will share with you shortly. I've got a motivational marketing quote from the founder of IKEA, all about the dangers of achievement. As per usual, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Join the Small Business Big Marketing community and have your marketing questions answered by other motivated business owners, including Timbo, over at crankmymarketing.com. Now, last episode, I read some feedback from a listener. Remember that? A listener who was excited every time she tuned into the show to take marketing action. And there is a direct correlation, I have decided, through my scientific studies of doing, what, 265 episodes of this show, speaking to amazing small business owners everywhere. There's a direct correlation between success and action, right? No doubt about it. Here is another example. This is an email I got from Andrew Lloyd. He doesn't give me his uh, website. That's okay. Uh, Andrew is very excited by what he's achieving He says, I've been following you since 2011. Three weeks ago, all those years of listening and learning finally came together and I took action with your words ringing in my ears. Oh, I like that. Here's the seven things Andrew has done. Number one, do something you are passionate about. It's not so much the seven things he's done, but what he's heard and actioned. Do something you're passionate about. Tick, find people's pain points and solve their problems. Tick, don't try and be perfect or over plan. Just deliver. Yeah. Production, not perfection, my friend. Jump out there with a minimum, minimal viable product. Oh, yeah. Don't wait for that puppy to be perfect. Too many peas there. Never will be. Just get it out there. Sharpen your offer on the stone of the market, as they say. 
Create and deliver great value. Be genuine and generous. Yeah. Thank people. Over deliver. And build a business with reoccurring income streams. Andrew's done all that. Just a moment ago, I signed my 15th customer within three weeks and are generating $1,000 per week in recurring income. Oh, I love that. He goes on to just say how very grateful he is. What a wonderful email. You know, guys, it all is in the action. I'm going to keep saying it for the life of this show. There's lots of good ideas on this show. My guests share deeply. I know you write some down. I know you put them in the back of your mind and go, oh, I'll do that one day. I'll do that one day. Well, guess what? Today's the day. Off you go. Hit stop right now. <laughs> no, don't. Just wait till the end of the interview. Pinch poo interview's great. It's fun. I share lots of ideas with Kate. But do action. Please action. And when you do, hit me up. Email me, tim at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Support for this show comes from Key Person of Influence, a structured business accelerator program for those keen to be an industry thought leader. Recently, I asked co-founder Glenn Carlson what led him to starting KPI. 78% of Australian businesses have less than four employees and they're in the service space. So doctors, lawyers, financial planners, personal trainers, physiotherapists, and there was nothing really structured to look after those people and help them accelerate through their entrepreneurial journey. And, and we have a very strong and have always had a very strong affinity with those sorts of business owners because we are those sorts of business owners and that's what the Key Person of Influence program is designed to, uh, to help people do. Key Person of Influence, taking you from good to seriously great. For a free hard copy of their Amazon bestseller, visit keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. Get on Timbo's mailing list over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Righto, let's get stuck in to today's guest. It is Kate Austin. She is the founder of Pincher Poo and she has got a very personal story to share, uh, which explains why Pincher Poo has come to be. It's a wonderful story. Now, Pincher Poo, just let me explain. Let me explain in Kate's words. It was born from a simple cheeky concept. Pinch the shampoos and other toiletries provided in your hotel room and donate them to those who need them most, people in homeless shelters or temporary accommodation. And Pinch Poo does that uh, by handing those toiletries over to various charities that get them out there. It's a great story about how to start something you're passionate about. And you know what? What Something interesting happened during this interview. Uh, in fact, I realised it before I went into the interview that Kate isn't absolutely nailing her marketing. None of us are. There's always room for improvement. And I noticed there were some things Kate could be doing that would significantly help grow her brand. So, sort of halfway through, I turn the table and it becomes a bit of a private marketing consult where I share some things that I do if I worked at Pinchapoo. So uh, that's kind of fun. And I want to do that. You know, every few episodes, I like the idea of maybe speaking to a founder of a small charity or not-for-profit and helping them along the way. So um, that's what happens here. Now, I started off by asking Kate a bit of a cheeky question. If she'd ever stolen some shampoo off the cleaner's trolley when it's out in the hall of the hotel. Controversial first question. Mm. Well... I haven't personally, but we have several people in our poo army who quite clearly tell us that they do that regularly. So I do. I'm surprised you haven't because, you know, like this is what you're all about. But I do, and I was hoping you had because it makes me feel incredibly guilty. Ah, no, it's included in the in the, in the cost of, of your hotel accommodation. So you shouldn't feel guilty, but there is something a bit cheeky about it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> One day the, maid, the roommate is going to walk out and I've got my hands in her trolley. And that sounds disgusting. But um, you know what I'm saying there, don't you? <laughs> love it. We love people like you. That's how we survive. <laughs> yeah, good on you. Good on you. Well, we'll talk about standing out in a crowded marketplace very shortly. However, yeah. pinch of poo. Where'd the idea come from? Okay, long story. I'll give you the short one. Um, we Give me the um, good one. Give me the good one. That's a better option, isn't it? Um, 
Well, Binge Your Pee started um, probably from a from a fairly dark time in my life, unfortunately, but we've managed to turn that into something quite special. So um, after going through quite a hard time in my teens at home, I was uh, forced to leave home um, in a very unsafe time uh, very quickly and all I could think to take in a, in a very short state of panic was my toothbrush, um, which even at the time, you know, sort of surprised me and it and stuck with me that moment that that's the thing that I knew was going to make me feel better, um, you know, in that in that moment when I did get to the other end, I knew I'd be able to brush my teeth and, and feel a bit better about life and start to, you know, make some decisions about how I was going to move forward. So um, I think, hmm. you know, really that's where that idea sort of was born in my heart but I wanted to do it right and I wanted the time to be right in my life and I wanted it to be a really sustainable organisation so we waited for the right time and and gave it some guts and and here we are. (laughs) So well thanks for sharing that Kate. You were clearly like a teenage girl who ran away from home which so that's left just a, a, a massive imprint on you but it was quite uh, correct me if i'm wrong or at least give me the timeline it was a decade or so before you actually launched pinch a poop yes that's right so it was probably a good sort of 12 13 years Mm. without dating yourself too much so 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 did you kind of sit with that idea all that time because you went into uh you worked in advertising uh did you and branding and and you know that crazy world of marketing and (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. Um, don't get me started no, I know. I don't get me started. Um, we, we, I, yeah. It, it was, it was definitely a time when I went. I need to turn this horrible, negative, and and horribly emotionally long road and journey into a positive. And um, I guess that's a choice you have to make in life, isn't it? You can either, you know, go down the wrong road after having sort of that type of foundation in your life, or you can, or you can turn it into something amazing. And I would like to think that you know, waiting until the right time in my life and for the right way to do it has really done that, turned it into something amazing. What was the right time? Like, what was that turning point where you've gone, right, eh? time to leave the cubicle, escape the cubicle? <laughs> yes, it is a cubicle. You know that too well. <laughs> um, I think after having children, um, well, I had my first son when Pinch Poo was born. I like to call that my middle child, um, my <laughs> poo child, if you will. Um, it was the right time because it, it made me realise that I didn't want to go back into that, you know, that vortex that is, you know, the corporate world and, and leaving my kids for, you know, 12 hours a day and being stuck in boardroom meetings and really, you know, that wasn't what was destined for me, I think, given, you know, what had happened to me in my teens. It was always sitting there and I had the opportunity, thankfully, with a very supportive husband who said, you know, now's the time, you know, now's the time to do this. You don't need to go back to work. You can, Good on you know, you can happen so amazing of him <laughs> Hubby, hubby's a good like that well only some of them oh how many have you had <laughs> no, <I mean. laughs> so righto so that's fantastic and what, and what a great time you know ha- having your children and making the decision go back into corporate or go and do your own thing which is a great time to what sort of example you want to set for your kids as well you know who, who yeah. you want them to look up to and what sort of impact you want to have on their life so, so what do you do you go so, okay right i am going to start this not-for-profit that's been on my mind for over a decade what's yeah. the first step there um, I guess this is kind of, again, dating myself. This is sort of pre-social media. Um, mm, you know, oh, that beautiful, I, peaceful time of our lives. I remember I that. I loved it. I know. It wasn't it beautiful, but we are very grateful because that's a major tool for us now. But, I mean, now, I mean, it would be a different question. But back then, you know, it really was that old school, you know, I'm going to tell my friends and their friends are going to tell their friends and, you know, maybe a few more friends will tell their friends. And then before you know it, um, you know, that circle becomes bigger and, and you're getting, you know, an enormous amount of product um, from people just pinching on their holidays and that's really as simple as it was until um, probably in the last couple of years we decided that this was it and we were going to ramp it up and we were going to become a nationally operating organisation and really own that hygiene name in Australia, which, you know, hasn't yeah, right. really been done. So that's just in the last 12 months? Yeah, probably more, 18 months to two years. We, we've been working really hard on sort of you know, getting more donations through and, and reaching out to more organisations who use those donations and really lifting our profile so people, you know, think of Pinchapoo when they when they hear the word hygiene, that's that's top of mind to them. That's really the vision. 
Yeah, right. Well, um, what I can tell you, Kate, is that I've had a good look at your your website and social media and what Pinch of Poo are doing. And, and, you know, whilst you've been operating for a few years, um, it is a very, very young business. So I want to find out a little bit more about Pinch of Poo, and then I'm going to give you a few marketing tips. Yay, good. You need though. I'm happy to listen to yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, anyone who's got advice to offer. Love um, it, love it. So, so one thing, okay, so when I first heard about Pinchy Poo, Poo, it was like, okay, so you're asking people to go to hotels to grab all the toiletries and send them to you, but it's like, that's 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 fun. But yeah. isn't wouldn't the the better idea be to just go and tap the Johnsons and Johnsons of the world on the shoulder and put pressure on them? to donate a whole lot of toiletries to these charities? That's an easy road, Tim. <laughs> I love an I, easy road, Kate. <laughs> I'm big on the easy road. I, I think what makes us special is that we are a collaborative effort. You know, we every single person, whether they bring back, you know, a suitcase full from, you know, their yearly trip to Bali or whether yeah. it's, you know, their next door neighbour who's gone to a bed and breakfast and, you know, pops one shampoo into your letterbox every little bit helps and and those people feel like every little bit helps and I think that's really what gives us that heart without yeah. having to go down that, you know, emotionally guilt driven road of, of attracting attention. You know, people love to be part of something that's just a bit quirky and yeah. you know, a bit different. So Yeah, no, I get that. I get that. But if I go the the hard ass of me goes, you know, like <laughs> at the end of the day, you just want to get as many toiletries into people in, into the hands of people in, in need as possible. Yeah. yeah, you know what? Yeah. We actually managed to do that with public donations. <laughs> love it, love it. Amazing Rats enough. the numbers around it. Where are you at right now? Like, how do you measure it? Well, yeah, that's, I mean, it's a juggernaut. Um, but to date, um, we have donated in excess of 450,000 products um, to organisations. So we're going to be very excited. I think we'll start using the term half a million soon. Um, nice. You know, which if you consider is just an enormous amount of people that are impacted um, you know, in their time of need through those donations. We we, we do have, to, to get back to your point about the corporates, we do have some of that stuff in the works, mm. but it will never be that, you know, the majority of what we do. What we do is, is really dealing with the people who want to be part of something, who maybe don't have the money to donate, um, you know, to an organisation and want to feel like they're still making a difference. This is something that people can be part of, which, you know, makes us stand out a little bit. Imagine if you could actually get, like, just on that corporate angle, if you could get a big hotel chain to actually put something in the bathroom saying, please pinch these toiletries. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, bring that yeah. on. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, there are still an enormous amount of opportunities in front of us, but for the moment we're yeah. able to do what it is that, you know, that we're doing with what we get you know, from an incredibly passionate poo army, as we lovingly refer, uh, refer to <laughs> the them. The poosters. Um, the poosters, yeah, that's a new one. <laughs> new one. Hey, tell me, let's talk about name. Now, you and I have had a conversation off air, and we're both pretty happy with funky names, of which Pinch yep. Poo is one. Uh, do like it. Uh, hubby, I understand, wasn't. He, he's a bit. He's probably a bit like me, a bit more literal. And I go, Pinch Poo, but that's like pinching poo. Correct. Uh, so, you're pretty happy with the name? I love the name. And I think initially, you know, it kind of came to me in this in this moment and people sort of say to me all the time, you know, where did you, how did it happen and how did you come up with it? And I would love to tell people that I was sitting at the top of, you know, Mount Everest and had this kind of divine moment. It wasn't that. I was ironically in the shower and it just hit me and I came running out half naked. There was a visual for everyone. Um, <laughs> You know, to my husband and said, you know, Pinchapoo, and he just went, you can't call it that, Kate. And and from that moment on, he shouldn't have known better. Yeah, you can't right. say me. <laughs> Is your kind of thing, uh, if someone says no where you're looking for a yes, then that's as good as a yes? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you have to be, don't you, if you want to make an impact or you want to do something different, whether it's non-for-profit or whether it's business, um, you know, if you... You can't take no for an answer. And we look at the people who inspire you. It doesn't matter where they're from or, or what they've done. They're people who didn't take no for an answer. They found another way. They found another option and, um, you know, rose above that. And that's that's certainly my, you know, my makeup, I guess, is is to, to not hear the word no and turn it, it into, a, into a yes. Yeah. I had uh, a lady by the name of Clarissa Raywood on a few weeks ago. She calls herself the happy family lawyer. And... 
very big into personal branding. And she yeah. she asks Beyonce. Now she doesn't know Beyonce, but she is inspired by Beyonce. And every time she's confronted with a decision, she asks herself, "What would Beyonce do?" Have you got yeah. a Beyonce? I, I, I wish I did have a Beyonce. That sounds crazy. <laughs> um, I, I like to think that you know, drawing back to my childhood is really, yeah, um, right. you know, that, that driver that, you know, what, what would people have expected me to do back then? And it, and it was absolutely to fail. Um, so that's really what keeps that fire burning is that, you know, I will never give into that. I'll always be better than what people expected, you Love know, it. me to do. So I guess, you know, really simply it's, you know, my parents and, and those people who, didn't expect that much of me that, that kept me going. So probably not as beautiful and fancy as Beyonce, but I think we all yeah. do have that inner voice that says, right, we've got a decision to make here. And, and you know, and it's wonderful that we can draw on different people, I think. Yeah, love that. Love that. Well, anything you can find, it, does, it might be last week or three decades ago that you can, that kind of lights your fire. That's, there's magic in that. And, uh, Absolutely. And you hold on to it. Yeah, totally. Now, uh, let's talk about standing out. I'm not going to say yep. a crowded marketplace, Kate. I am going to say an overcrowded marketplace, uh, which yeah. is the not-for-profit world. Uh, there, Therein lies your challenge. And, you know, meeting it with a name like Pincher Poo to start with is great because that'll, pe- yep. that'll get people looking twice, asking what? It's a door opener, you it, know, it's a conversation. Totally. Stuff. Yeah. Total door open. So, so what what are you doing right now? Because I want to share some ideas, but how are you standing out, going about standing out and getting noticed? I think other than the name, um, which, you <laughs> and know. And running out of the shower half naked, which well, that yeah. will work every time, but. Wow. You, know. you, haven't, you haven't met me. You might not know that that's <laughs> right. That's <laughs> yeah, that's right. Correct. Um, <laughs> I, I think what we are doing is is looking at the market and have for a long time and if you're to put a business hat on which you do actually have to do sometimes with not-for-profits um and it, it kills you because you want it to be all about heart but there's a reality attached to that that you want to have not just a, a campaign campaigns are disposable you know how quickly do we forget what we donated to you know um you know two weeks ago mm. even um you know they, they come they quick they affect you and then all of a sudden they're gone so there are a lot of causes a lot of campaigns and even organizations in the market who had a concept and went this is great let's run with this and you know have attracted all this social media attention and 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 whatever it might be and got this amazing amount of momentum but then all of a sudden they find that they've got all these people to communicate to and, and once the campaign or that particular moment has finished, what's what's left to actually communicate to these people? So for us, we, we want to have a sustainable organisation, one mm-hmm. that continually engages people, um, you know, one that, you know, a brand that people can engage with. So um, how are you doing that? So I guess it's really around creating that kind of collaborative cultural you know, thing, and in terms of using, um, you know, all of our, I'm not sure if you've checked out our, our Facebook mm-hmm. post, but all of our, our stuff is very inclusive. It's not, this is what we're doing. This is what, you know, as in the board of Pinter yeah. Period, it's what, what we're all doing together. What So, you know, so what, what you're doing, and I can see it coming to life in the coming months and years, is that building a tribe. You are, you're building this... This, this this large, let's hope, large group of posters who, yeah. <laughs> o- over time, <laughs> will... Oh, there's so many lines and dad jokes. I just can't go there, Kate. But, um, you know, <laughs> like, that's that's your challenge, I think, and that's an exciting challenge because Did all he? of a sudden you're going to have, like, a whole lot of people uh, doing doing the work for you. Absolutely. And, and they want to do the work for you. You know, sometimes we spend so long saying thank you to people and making sure people feel appreciated and really... Over time, you realise it's actually their pleasure to do that. People want to be involved. And like I said earlier on, there's not a lot of charities that you can impact without making financial contribution. Not a lot of charities you can impact by stealing stuff. How about that? (laughs) There you go. Can I give you... I've got nine ideas. Okay, go. And, like, we'll make this sort of like a private consult, but you can also go, Timbo, really? That is a shocker. Or, Timbo... (laughs) That rocks, right? Yeah, I've got my pen and paper. Oh, we're, we're actually recording this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Crazy idea. Hey, uh, number one, going yep. to your website, make it easy for people to send you the toiletries. 
I struggled a little bit to find it, I think, under the About Us section of, like, how to do it. Yep. I, I reckon that should be, like, in your face. If there's one thing you want people to do by visiting your website, it, it is the the address or the process to get you the toiletries. Yep. I reckon, number two, a vi- your story's great. We've all got great stories. We just need to find them. You know yours. You know why you are doing this. And I just think a video of you sharing that uh, on your homepage, again, puts a face to the name and yep. gives us, you know, it's all about story. My guest last week, this guy, Dave Musson uh, from Saddleback Leather, he, um, he talks a lot about story and it's just a great way to engage people. Yeah, for sure. Now, he did, speaking of Dave, this is my idea number three, he did a fantastic video, which was, he makes these beautiful leather bags, like best in the world but leather bags, yeah. and people try and copy them. You know, they produce fakes. Yeah. So he's produced a video titled How to Copy One of His Bags, right? He takes, yeah. <laughs> it's like fantastic. So I reckon a video for you on how to pinch uh, yeah. shampoo would rock. We've got a few little uh, viral campaigns in the works. We've yeah. got um, a, a film crew, yeah, coming to do some really quite stuff that we won't give away too much of now. But certainly, um, yeah, some fun to be to be had there. We've got some fantastic briefs and good and scripts and talents. So stay tuned for that one. I think one of the great things about your brand, and by the way, I love the visual identity you've created, the logo and all that type of stuff. Absolutely rocks. It's sort of like listeners. It's sort of a fifties. Time, yes, you know, sorry. yeah, uh, happy days. Um, but uh, you, what you've done is given yourself permission to have some fun. You know, you're dealing in a ser- at the end of the day, you are trying to put toiletries in the hands of, of the needy, but you're having some fun with it along the way, which I think, again, we don't want to be that emotionally driven charity. I mean, that's another thing that's saturated in the market is yep. the only way to get attention is to tell the sub stories. And believe me, we hear them, um, yeah. but there's about picking the right time to tell those stories to engage people. But, you know, we really just want it to be something different, something upbeat and something, you know, that people can be part of without having to bawl their eyes out and feel guilty about eating their <laughs> yeah, dinner. Because yeah. getting shampoo in your eyes, that's bad enough. You know, that's bad. No that one causes, needs that. No one needs that. No more tears. Uh, um, <laughs> speaking of um, story, a blog. Now, your blog is a little bit out of date, naughty, Naughty, uh, yeah. you got you got to do it. And I reckon a blog that would be, I, I like to come up with what I call editorial missions, which are these yeah. three questions that help you identify what to blog about. The questions are what have you got for who and what outcome can they expect? And I reckon bathroom stories for those looking for a laugh would yeah. be a really fun blog. And you could get people to do guest posts. You could interview others. You could interview, like, hotel cleaners or plumbers or chambermaids <laughs> or, you know, like, nurses and just get, like, heaps and heaps of bathroom stories. Yeah, it's a great idea. We we could almost tap it onto Over Christmas we had um, kind of a, I guess, a, a social media campaign and it was, you know, hashtag I'm a poo pincher. <laughs> And we encourage people to kind of send photos of themselves or post photos of themselves actually pinching stuff while away on Christmas Love holidays. It. Um, you know, which we had a fantastic result from. There were some hilarious pictures, you know, of people doing sneakies and putting them in their handbag. And shoving yeah, them in. well, that, that was another idea. So more of that social media with your Facebook and Instagram, like selfies, pinching, you know, yep. yourself pinching poo or whatever it is. That just sounds so wrong. Can't yeah, no, it doesn't. That. Right. So right. So right. <laughs> hey, what about National Pinch a Poo Day? A poo day, National Poo Day. I've had a couple of guests on this show. One in particular, Flip Shelton, who uh, she started National Porridge Day. Um, yeah. And I know another listener has started National Surf Day in New Zealand, having listened to this show. I just yeah. can see just this one day of the year where basically we strip hotels of all toiletries. <laughs> Bring that on. I, uh, we, we, we have... Um, had something in the works. I guess we, we're working on the wording a little bit. I'm not sure if, you know, all kind of highbrow corporates, etc., mm. would kind of go for National Poo Day, but not to say that we make excuses for who we are. Yeah, so, it sounds like uh, you are. No, 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 no. It's about finding a clever, it has to be clever. Yep. We, we like to, you know, to be clever. But, yeah, we certainly will look at a National Poo Day as yeah, poo. Yeah, <laughs> bring that on. Uh, <laughs> 
I reckon, and I'd very rarely suggest advertising as a solution uh, as a marketing to a marketing problem. However, I think a really nice contra deal, or wouldn't be contra, it'd be like some uh, deal with the in-flight magazines, the airline magazines. Yeah, yeah, you perfect, got it. Mate. Yeah. Mate, yeah. you have so got to have ads in the magazines, on the TV screen, because, you know, half of every plane's full of business people going to stay, or but not business people, just people going to stay in hotels, right? That's yeah, more than half, you would say, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. I think um, I've, there's been several times I've, I've sat in a plane and gone, we need to have ads in, you know, the, the Virgin mags and, you know, whatever they might be, the in-flight stuff um, yep. is absolutely on the radar, yeah. It's just Love around, it. you know, funding and that sort of stuff. But it's the perfect marriage. It's the same as working with, you know, we sort of had our eyes on flight centre, that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, for a little while now, we're probably in the phase where we're getting, um, you know, working more with with corporates and and getting some sponsors and you know partnerships. Yeah, well, partnerships arena. is huge. I mean, I've spoken a lot of the guests I've had on the show have had su- great success with partnerships, and I can imagine a flight centre is a great one because again, yeah. going into that travel wallet, a little card reminding reminding people. Absolutely, and we've had several flights, you know, people who manage flight centres, etc. say to us, you know, what can we do, how can we make this work, but we'd really like to do it sort of on a, you know, certainly on a state level, but, you know, it would be lovely to do that eventually nationally to, and to have people, you know, bring that product back in through the store and have them mm. as, as drop-off points, etc. So, Hey, yeah. now you're talking. Yeah, see, I'm on to it. Distribution. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Here in, ends my marketing ideas. Back to you. Is How do yeah. you, like, there is a lot to do. Staff of how many at the moment, Pinch Poo? Staff of one? Oh, it's just staff of zero. We mm. all, we're 100% uh, volunteer at run. But, um, I mean, obviously we have a board and we have, you know, regular volunteers. So um, at the moment we're probably a group of around 40, 30, 40 people nationally who, yep. who seem to make this work. Um, we certainly, once once we move into a warehouse, which we're so desperately looking to do in the next couple of weeks, couple of months. You got um, one? No, desperately Listeners, searching. Well, let's, hey, let's yes. Let's let's use this time. What do we need right now? We get, let's let's um, just rock this pinch of poo. We need a warehouse. Where's that got to be? Fifty to one hundred square meters, somewhere in the in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, and you know we would make fantastic neighbours. We will bring scones and slabs yep. of beer. And Lots of cuddles, anything that it will take to get a, a space to operate efficiently. In. Yeah, love it. What about uh, what else do you need? You need more shower. You may need more toiletries. If anyone, uh, SBB, I'm going to call my people the SBBMers. I'm oh. sure many of them want to become poosters. So, yeah. um, how do they become a pooster? Where do they send the stuff, Kate? Okay, so jump jump on our website and we will, to your point, um, Tim, do something around finding that information a little bit easier. Our website is actually relatively new, so we're still teething mm-hmm. through some of that stuff. Um, but that's a great suggestion and it's not the first time we've heard that. So we'll get on to that. But definitely jump on the website, find out where your um, closest drop-off point is. We're all around Victoria and we do each major uh, capital city around Australia. What are the but drop-off also- points people's homes or businesses? or. Uh, combination of businesses and um and people's homes so um there's sort of something you know all the way way around metro and regional victoria Mm -hmm. um that's relatively close and if you can't be bothered doing that you can always post via our po box as well so that that information is all on you know facebook give it now pitchapoo.org.au and what was the other one the Pinch appear on Facebook. That's that's the best way to engage with us. Um, you know, we'll send, send us a message or whatever it might be. We'll get straight back to you. We love talking to our poo army. So <laughs> love it. Become I, one. I yeah. had to laugh. I know you're not using Twitter much at the moment. That should change. But I had to laugh at your Twitter ID, which was pin, pinch poo underscore AUS, which yes. like says to me, what someone had already taken pinch poo. That's actually a funny story we, that somebody had, yes, correct, taken a uh, pinch of poo and she was of Arabic descent and we attempted to communicate with her and explain what we were doing and perhaps she could, you know, add a one on the end of her name or whatever it might be, but just didn't happen. Not to so, be. No, 
So, but that's okay because you know what, Pinchapoo will be, you know, Pinchapoo underscore, and then another country before you know it. So exactly right. And and look, you never know, Pinchapoo in Arabic may well mean something. Have you have you gone for the translation? I am not googling that. Right. <laughs> I love it. Hey, Kate, good on you. Uh, love the fact that you have built a not for profit out of something that means a lot to you and something that affected you in your early days. And and I just would love to see this thing grow into uh, a wonderful story into the future and like that 450,000 shampoos that needs to just be 4.5 million in no time and it, and it will be because our growth is so massive and um you know in people anybody listening jump on board right we're good fun we, we like to have fun in what we're doing um you know we really can't survive without people becoming posters as you've kind of so lovingly changed their name to during this but um, you know, we love for the more people who kind of even, you know, not just jump on the internet or, or social media, but share it with their friends, talk to your friends, you know, next time they're going away, hey, have you heard about this charity that collects, you know, and silent ambassadors is so important in what we do. So, you know, help us help us achieve the vision to, to give access to every single disadvantaged Australian who requires their help. She's on a soapbox now. Thanks, Kate. You gave me the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well Thanks done. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Well, what a great story. What a great story. Born out of a sad story, but good on Kate for turning that around into a wonderful, wonderful positive. Now, uh, I want to share my top three learnings from that fireside chat with Kate. And these learnings are brought to you by the people at where? Huh? That's it. Correct. Whoever yelled that out the back. Key person of influence, grab their Amazon bestseller, keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. Just got to double check that. I was going to say dot au, but no, it's dot com. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Get ahead of myself. All right. Learning number one, get clear on your why, right? We talked about it before. When you get clear on your why, the what, the how, the when, the who, that all becomes easy. Why do you do what you do? Uncover your story. Number two, don't be afraid to create your own language for your brand. Kate's starting to develop that. The poo army, the poosters, have some fun with it. All right? Could be a point of difference. Learning number three, make it easy for people to do what you want them to do. Want them to buy from you. You want them to send you the shampoo, whatever it is. Now, Kate isn't doing that well just yet. I'm sure she'll fix that on a website shortly. But for all of us, remove all the hurdles that are in the way to people that are blocking people giving you money or from doing whatever you want them to do. It's a good thing to do. Make life easy. Now, they're my three learnings. This is what I want you to do. Firstly, go and steal some toiletries from a hotel. That you are staying at, okay? And then go to pinchapoo.org.au and send those toiletries to one of Kate's team. It'll be on the website. It's actually up on the About Us section of her website. And then hit Kate up on Twitter, pinchapoo underscore AUS, and tell her you heard her on the Small Business Big Marketing Show. Because right now her Twitter, it's a bit quiet, and I want to build it. I want to get some action, Jackson. And if you have an idea to help Pinch and Poo grow, then leave a comment in the show notes for episode 265. IKEA's founder, Ingvar Kamprad, once said, The most dangerous poison is the feeling of achievement. The antidote is to every evening think what can be done better tomorrow. That almost brings us to the end. Plenty of marketing gold, though, coming your way. Next episode, I chat with one of the managers at the review site, Yelp. It's a highly informative episode, i got to tell you, in which we cover the importance of chasing reviews, why you should chase reviews, 
where the best review sites are that you should be claiming your page at, how to respond to good reviews and negative reviews, and everything in between. Very, very interesting chat and a marketing strategy that we haven't covered on the show. Hey, be sure to grab your free hard copy of the Key Person of Influence Amazon bestseller over at keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. You can get a free audio book of your choice, choose from 180,000 titles, over at audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM. Audio production for this show is lovingly done by the rock star Daryl Delirious Misson and the music bed created by the inimitable Lockie Dolly, who, who actually is a rock star. Jimmy Barnes's keyboard player, actually. And he's got his own band. Love you guys, both of yous. If you need a speaker for an upcoming event, then I'm all yours. Check out timreed.com.au. If you want to surround yourself with other motivated business owners, then join the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. We are having such solid, motivated, inspired chats around marketing and growing each other's businesses that it is wonderful. It's going to say exhausting, but it's not. It's a whole lot of fun. Until next week, I'm Timbo Reed. May your marketing be the best marketing Bye for now.